Vicuna. And on today's show, we have a very special guest. His name is Marcos Vega, and he is the club president for the San Rafael High School, uh, the Bulldog Podcast. We are so excited to have you here. Um, please introduce yourself. My name is Marcos Vega. Um, this is a really good opportunity that I, um, you guys have invited me, and I hope to find something. I don't know. <laughs> no, you're have good. A good. Have a good conversation. Yeah, you're yeah, good. Yeah. No, thank you so much for being here. Um, this is truly uh, one of our favorite parts or, or, of doing this is being able to meet new people and listen to their story, their journeys. And, um, you know, just we're going with the flow and see where the conversation takes us. But um, before that, um, today we're going to learn more about yourself and the work you do. But I do want to have an icebreaker question just to kind of ease us into the conversation. And mine is, have you guys been watching the World Cup? And if so, what team are you rooting for? And I'm going to start with um, My, you? Me? Yeah, Wait, Javier. Okay. And then we'll go with you and then I'll go. Okay. Um, so I'll be honest, I, I don't really care too much about the world cup um i don't really follow soccer like that but um i think that it, it is really cool to see all the different teams kind of like all the fandoms from each mm -hmm. team kind of like how they all create like memes whenever a, me a, a, a like a yeah. team gets defeated or something yeah. or there's like many little like beefs that are made with mm -hmm. with the teams individually so yeah. it's really fun to see that on social media um but personally for me i mean so I'm Mexican, so I'd go for Mexico, but Mexico got not, not knocked out already. Um, <laughs> yeah. So all I heard from today is that Brazil got knocked out, right? That's like mm -hmm. the big, big thing. Um, so yeah, I'm not really going for a team, but I enjoy seeing the memes and the chaos that it creates. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> what about you? I'm going to add on to that. I am a big fan. Well, my parents are a big fan, but then I got a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, at the beginning of it, it was like, not really, but at the, at the end of it, like, I'm excited now. Who's going to win? I did hear about that too. I was, um, I did see that the ball did bounce back from the goal, which is like they couldn't like get the penalty and then like they were out of it. But that was, mm -hmm. I wanted them to win too, but they were knocked out. But I did see Argentina was winning, and then so that's a good thing. So mm. yeah. okay, yeah. So what? Okay, from all the teams, who are you rooting for to win the World Cup? Argentina now. Argentina. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm a huge fan. Uh, Javier <laughs> knows this. I've, yeah. I've tried to watch every single game I can. Um, actually, I arrived for like five minutes late to my meeting today because <laughs> Argentina was playing. I'm very sad and bummed out that Brazil lost yeah. and then they were eliminated with the penalties. Um, but it's really crazy, especially now with technology. I think back in the day, you would only watch it on live television. Mm -hmm. But like now I'm watching it on Peacock. And I, or you can watch it on your yeah, phone. Yeah, on your now, phone. Right, yeah. And then all the memes and all of the the chaos. Like the World Cup is full of surprises. Every mm -hmm. year, like there's something new. It, it's just crazy. But one thing that I really admire part of watching the World Cup is the dedication and the passion those players have. Like, it's insane. You know, you see them running, sweating, fighting for that World Cup uh, title. Mm -hmm. um, and we watch as viewers, we're just watching the outside. But deep down, like, these guys have been training, you know, every single day. That goal is set in their mindset. Um, so it's absolutely, for me, it's an amazing I enjoy that part and it gets me nervous and on the edge, like it keeps me on the edge. Um, mm -hmm. Especially today, Argentina was very, oh, that, that game was <laughs> insane. Were, yeah. um, but with that kind of leads into um, dreams and goals. And I know that you started the Bulldog Podca Podcast Club. Um, and that's really, really cool. You see and hear on social media so many people doing that, but then having one in, in your hometown, like Tay, um, it's nice to know that, that people are out there doing something. And um, But I do want to ask, what inspired you to start this Bulldog podcast? Actually, before that, do you want to explain what the Bulldog podcast is and then we can uh, explain like what inspired you? Yes. Um, so our mission is to like amplify a voice kind of like similar to Tay radio in a way but um mm -hmm. do it at a school level mm -hmm. and then we were um for right now doing like interviewing teachers and like students and, you know i'm trying to like interview the seniors because they're leaving next year but that is our mission to amplify like a voice to hear like their story in a way that's, that's what i'm trying to do more and then um that is our mission and then our mission for next year if it's possible to go to other schools like tl and like interview like the principal oh. there or oh, do something do something else yeah do you oh. know if TL has their own podcast club or no? They don't. Oh, and they also, don't. I want to add into that. Um, we were thinking of doing like if we could 
make one on every campus, like the um, like other clubs I have I've seen. Mm-hmm. That'd be really cool that if we could do. Oh, that. yeah, interesting. Well, that's really. Really cool. Like you said, our uh, Tay Radio is, um, you know, ampl- amplifying youth voices, which is big. I think a lot of people try to um, downgrade the intelligence and the of, I don't want to say downgrade, but a lot of people look at young people saying, you haven't lived long enough to, to know what you have an opinion. To have yeah. an opinion. Like, have an That's what I mean. But, is, yeah. but I think that especially now at age, there's a lot of um, youth people that want to be heard and, and need to be heard. So the fact that you're doing this at school is is very inspiring, uh, especially that, you know, it's it's a bit more restricted in, in my yeah. I th- in opinion. And I think it is, you know, we, we also can say things and talk about things. Being on school is very different. Yeah. But you, what... Yeah, go it, ahead. Oh, you, no, no, no. Yeah, what, <laughs> what, okay. I mean, speaking of cha- challenges, right? So yeah. those are the yeah. challenges that a lot of us have to face. Um, and uh, leading in, I, I wanted to ask, what are the challenges that you've been facing so far with your podcast club? Um, one of them is the censorship. It's a mm. um, there's not specifically rules that are in place. They're just like, like um, how you're talking about so like about um, that there are like stuff that we cannot say, and there's like stuff that we can say. It's it's a weird kind of thing. There's not really a set of rules. And that's another thing that I want to talk with the principal and like other school administ- um, administrators about like how we can create some rules that I would implement when mm-hmm. we get there. And then the other challenge is um, getting those episodes onto the um, our platforms. Because I feel like let's say we're talking about some like issue mm-hmm. and like we post it a month later, that issue is already gone and that news is like already oh, that's, the, that's the thing see, that I we've see. come to understand yeah. is that like news, when it's like a big story. It's pretty it, big. Yeah. You need to like hop on it immediately. Right. Because there's, like, no yep. waiting period whatsoever. Like, you need to constantly keep going at the pace of the story. Um, so I agree with you that that is a challenge. And and, and it kind of sucks that you guys aren't, yeah. like, completely, um, like, given a, a platform to really say what you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we have this platform so that you're allowed to yeah. say all that. But, <laughs> like, yeah, like, um, Marco was telling me that also that, like, you know, you have to get your podcast checked. Yeah, before. That's, a, that's another big thing too. Um, where with our um, advisor is that she already has on top of um, already grading so many homework and like um, mm-hmm. teaching her classes, and plus doing the tr- um, transcription, like r- approving our episodes. That's another big issue that we have is like how can we get those episodes fast enough so people can listen to them? And that's another big issue I think too. Like the censorship plus also getting them approved is another big issue. Mm-hmm. So I think the tricky part is really that you're in school, right? And in yeah. school, that there's is. a lot of protocols. There's a lot of um, things that you have to uh, be aware of. Yeah. And when you start a club, you know you have a faci- facilitator, but that's just to oversee mm-hmm. what's going on. Um, but like, they have their other responsibilities that causes them to be, you know, that's not their top prior priority, which is understandable. And I think, um, you know, those are challenges you face. We also face challenges as well. Um, but the, the good thing or the thing that I admire is that despite all of that, you're still pushing forward. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. know that you will figure out a way with your, your team to have those things faster. It might not come easy, but definitely it will come in the future. Um, and I really love your idea of having that connection with your teachers. Personally, I had a, a teacher, his name was Mr. Semberg, who had the most amazing uh, relationship uh, from a teacher to a student. Um, and then I had other teachers that it was, they were just teaching. So when you listen to their stories and get to know them, you you know, like they're, they're people, mm-hmm. you know, they're people who, who are not only just teaching you, but um, are there to support you. So I really like that. Yeah, um, that is a great point. I, I've seen some of my old teachers from Davidson and some um, one of my English teachers. I've seen him like during COVID and seen him out throughout. And it's like, it's really cool to see him because like sometimes you don't really see your teacher out in the real world. Mm-hmm. Another, because I think that's another thing that sometimes you want to see them. And then, mm-hmm. so that's, I think that's another thing too. Yeah. yeah there's, it's a different, and I feel like you can trust your teachers more when you have like a, um, you know, a respectful and, and, relationship with them yeah. not crossing that, any yeah. lines that's how i feel because um so for example i graduated in 2017 from sr and i was recently at sr last two weeks ago now um to go give a couple presentations there and it was just awesome seeing that literally the teachers i had from when i graduated are still there 
and it was awesome like getting to see them again and it's because i had a close relationship with my teachers in high school and a lot of them remembered me and i remembered them and it's a really nice experience you'll feel it especially after you yeah. you're, you know you graduate but like for me since i hadn't seen them in over five years now like it was it was really heartwarming to see that they're doing well you know mm -hmm. um and it's also good for me because then the teachers that I don't like don't no longer work there anymore. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> I, I get to see both perspectives mm -hmm. of the yeah. coin there. Um, now, jumping into more of like your experience, what it, what have you learned so far? How long have you had this podcast? Since the beginning of September. September of oh, this year? Young. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so, so yeah. it's a baby. It's yeah, a, it's, it's a baby young. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Which, so what have you learned so far? Um, that well, the biggest issues were... Um, the censorship that proving stuff that was later on but, right. um, the big issue was finding to put them on platforms uh, getting like going on platforms and putting them on platforms which is like another thing that i've never known how to do okay but like i'm a really good i love te um, technology a lot so i just figured out somehow through the internet magically somehow but um i figured out how to like get through like um spotify into like finally apple mute apple podcast that's another big one that's another mm -hmm. has a lot of requirements that you need but I think those were like the first steps, like how to get them onto platforms. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that I, that can, I can be a very a hard thing because I mean, you guys don't have money, and yeah, a lot yeah. of those require subscriptions um, mm -hmm. to put you be able to put your your podcast in those type of platforms. So that that's good though. Yeah. Um, Especially that you guys are working, I know, with a very limited budget, right? Going mm -hmm. bouncing off of what you said, Sansi. Um, but I think what you have so far is a good start. Again, it's just about showing the importance to the principal, to the district, that there are a lot of students who are interested in podcasting. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, how many students are actually in your club? Oh, yeah, that's good. I would say right now it's not that much, but it's like a minimum of 10 people. No, that's, a good, that's, that's not that's bad. Good yeah. <laughs> that's not bad at all. It's not, and it's also not that bad because like um, it's only it's a brand new it's in a brand new club, too. It's like not that um, it's new, but like. It's not like other clubs that um have already been there, so it's like no. It's like mm -hmm. it's like, it's a good start. So it's like that's another goal I had. Like, how do I get people to join? And that's like they joined, um, somehow. So, uh -huh. so somehow, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, it was like um, that was kind of like one of my first goals. Like, was like, how do we get people to join? I think it was just talking to students about if they wanted to join, because I I'm not gonna force anybody to join a club or anything. Um. But that was one of the one of the main goals, I think. Speaking of clubs, actually, I wanted to kind of actually talk about clubs because um, when I was at SR, um, I helped my friend create the anime club there, mm -hmm. and back in like our junior year or something, and we started off with like ten or fifteen people, and then like we only had like two club meetings. And then after that, it was like, after the third club meeting, we only had like five people left. So we just kind of disbanded. Uh, so, I, I mean, from that experience, I feel like clubs are pretty, can also be kind of like unreliable with yeah. students sometimes, right? Because students have so much going on. Yeah. Um, and not every student wants to hang out every single time at the club during this Thursday, right? Yeah. Um, but what do you guys talk about at the club? Like, what, what do you guys plan out? Um, we usually don't really talk we just like hang out in the classroom for a bit and then i usually am the one who goes out and like interview some people because i feel like i'm not gonna like what i said before is like not gonna force somebody to be a host not gonna be um mm -hmm. or do like an interview if they don't want to so it's like i have to like figure out um well what the team is like they're they're just, like starting out how to do a podcast just like me but um i'm not gonna like force anybody to do anything so it's like it's a little bit on my own a little bit but I'm trying to get that a little bit. Later, trying to get the team to get mm -hmm. there on the same page. I think it, it's seeing someone do it and then oh oh I see how that yeah. works. How the, it's a little bit of um, see it to do it kind yeah. of yeah. stuff. Um, I do have just kind of like a fun question. Who would you like to have on the show? Like, is um, there anyone specific that you have like like a teacher or, or yeah someone from the district or a student too? I don't know. I would want to have if we could do it. If it would be possible to have a celebrity on the show, yeah, mm, that'd be really that cool. Be nice. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, Jenna Ortega. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, who's that, listening? Yeah. That'd be really cool. I think. That'd I think so. And I think there's a lot of uh, good things that people that are you know are big on social media that could say um, that could inspire the youth. 
in in schools, specifically high school. Yeah. I feel like that's something that youth celebrities actually don't do enough of. And I, I have a feeling I, I know why, because most youth celebrities are actually homeschooled. They yeah. don't actually go to an actual high school. So many of them don't even have the experience of being in a high school mm-hmm. or in a middle school because they've yeah. been homeschooled their entire life. Um, but I still think I agree with you. I think it'd be cool for more youth celebrities to like get out there to come to schools and stuff. Because usually when we have celebrities come to schools, it's usually like some like local, like, for example, skateboarder or something from yeah. the 90s or that yeah. some people remember, but not this generation remembers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would say I want to add into that. Uh-huh. When you also said how that inspired, I got inspired by um, like that by a young, um, I would say celebrity on YouTube. Mm hmm. Should we go to that way? Or? Yeah, you can go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> adding on to Javier, um, so it was the Dolan twins. They they've been. I think they had some. The Dolan, Dolan twins. twins. So, I'm yeah, not never familiar. Yeah. I no. rec- I recognize the names, but yeah. I don't. I'm not. They had to... some. They had some drama, and then they. Like, I think they got maybe canceled. I'm not really sure. Not really sure. That's okay. Not, that's not some reason. Are they I'm part of that sure. Emma Chamberlain group? Yes. 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 Okay. With Jeffrey Star. Right. Yeah. Like, the, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. I'm yeah. lost completely, but okay. keep, I, I, I continue. Emma, and, but um, <laughs> they. I think they separated from Ember Chamberlain. Ember Chamberlain is really good, but we're not. We're not <laughs> but she's awesome, but um, the Dolan twins. They um, I found them kind of relatable because one of them, one of the, I'm not really sure. I think it's Ethan and Grayson. I forget which one had um something, but. So one of them had um, acne, which I had during COVID, and it was like kind of a, a relatable thing. And then they made like a podcast, which I found out, and it was like a really cool thing that I wanted to do. Like one day, this was like twenty twenty one, but um, or yeah, somewhere sometime during COVID. But um, that's where I got my inspiration. Like, what if I could do it? If they could do it, oh. and that was a good thing because like he went through like a process which I'm going through kind of now. It was like um having um acne and having it not anymore, and that's like. A big thing that he went through and that's so, like I kind of see myself relatable to him and when they when I started hearing their podcast it was like a big changer I think I don't know a big um opener of like how I could do it one day I don't know. so that's, oh, that's what awesome. that was like you like your what opened the door basically to podcasting yeah. was that moment right there yeah that's awesome that's, 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 I mean that's like really I cool. said I think that Social media can be a tool um, to inspire and motivate and do a, make a, make a change, be the be the change, be the different um, to many things. And so, if you got your inspiration with them, I mean, they succeeded at doing something. And I think everyone's like doing a podcast now. You know, yeah, like, yeah I, there is. I yeah. think a podcast is a bit more like personal i feel like youtube videos a lot of them are like you know with high production and yeah. and it used to be like very low and now it's like very all, the, oh, all over the top yeah, YouTube now. just changed a lot. yeah and then yeah. podcasts i feel like it's a place where you can talk and kind of express yourself in a way and um i know you mentioned that you you had this insecurity of of right of uh, acne yeah. and going like, through that yeah. and and being hold that holding you back but because you listen to someone saying something and their experience you're like man if that person did it i can do it i think that's the ultimate goal even even with tay is being able to say that hey it doesn't matter where you come from who you are it's just you know that is sport is supposed to be part of your story but you need to continue going because what you want can inspire so many other people sorry yeah yeah, and getting your voice heard is so important. And I feel like in a podcast setting, right, like what we're doing right now, it, it helps us bring out our more re- like our real side, right? Because we're very, we feel very vulnerable here because mm-hmm. we're very intimate, right? We're like yeah. here all together at the moment. It's not like a text message or mm-hmm. a pre-recorded thing, like a Zoom call or something. Because that's the that's the thing when when the pandemic started, when we started having school through yeah. Zoom, right? It didn't feel the same as being inside of a classroom. It didn't. So it got, yeah. I'm 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 gonna side with that a yeah. tiny bit. I'm gonna be a hate, not really a hater, but um, I actually I'm gonna be one of those kids who actually kind of enjoyed it a little bit. Oh really? Because I because my Davidson Middle and Elementary schools weren't the best years of my life. I would mm. say because I had to um improve myself a little bit. But um, when I went into it, I they told us it would be like t- two weeks. But um, I'm not gonna go into that. Um, but um, after those few weeks went to months, and then a few years later it kind of felt like college in a way like what if this is kind of preparing for college and what if um what could i do more if i could be online you mm. know that was a big that's a big thing i think so the pandemic kind of helped you 
see more. What could I do? What could I do more with technology? Yeah, yeah, on the computer. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm with you on the same page. I mean, I recently took over my like my work here is is be hosting, but also it's the computer. Like literally, yeah. my computer is m everything to yeah. me, and um, the pandemic did that a lot. But I think that the podcast part of being able to sit down and have a conversation, which, being very honest, our generation is losing over time yeah, because I of the texting and the you know the Snapchats, the the DMs, the yeah. the TikTok sending. Like you just communicate through that that. But that part of the podcast um, is something more, and I think that's why I continue to do this, and I'm still here. Um, I get nervous doing it. It, it. There's so many, we talk about some serious topics sometimes, um, but I'm here because of that part of that connection and, and, and getting a bit personal and for a good cause. Um, with that being said, I wanted to ask you, do, would you want a, your own podcast that isn't related to school? Yes. I, that's what, that was the thing that, um, I, um, yes, I do. I always thought about some names that I thought about. I'm not going to. Uh, it's still not, not spoil it. Yet. Spoil it. Someone okay. can take it. Yeah, <laughs> not official yet. But um, I did think about it. I was like, what if, what if I could do it? You know. And then that's what that's where the, the goal went. Was like, what if I could do it? But let's first do one at school and let's see what happens there. Okay. And then let's after that let's see what happens after if I can do my own. And that was um one of the goals that I've had. Like after I saw the Dolan twins was like one year later. Like let's say what if I could do it? And I was like now we're now we're here. So okay. You know? That that's that's good though. I well, mean, you starting off somewhere and then leading and seeing where it goes. At least you're doing something. Yeah. On me, on the other hand, I've been telling Javier this that I've been uh, wanting yeah. my own podcast for <laughs> since the pandemic. Actually, yeah. uh, my own podcast is not related to Tay again, just because there's a lot of things that I would love to share and and talk to different people. But my thing is is that I like things to be perfect. That's the thing that's really that stops me. It's like, no, that's not right. I don't have the right equipment. I don't have this. And it's been, what, it's been two years now? And I'm still with the same thing. So the fact that you're like, you know, I'm going to start here and then I'm going to work up there is a really great thing because you're doing something. Yeah, about the equipment too is um, we usually use our own phones for the recording for right now. But um, I'm trying to like get more recording stuff so it'd be better. Because like um, the entire mission is like, I think kind of you said like the equipment is like a big issue like how to get big equipment and how we also how do we make it for free and like on a campus that's like um that maybe sometimes the club might not have a much um funding as right we have. like how is it possible right yeah so it's like another big issue is like fundraising yeah like how can we make it free as possible but also have it for like the next few years like they could do whatever podcast they want but without spending so much money and because so the stuff's already there yeah yeah so yeah. yeah that's the, that's the cool thing because when i was um because what i heard also when i went to go visit sr was that they have a music technology class now um but have you been to that class or have you checked um, it out i heard that it's still in development oh, oh no i think it's no i think it's still going on but the other problem is that most of the teachers i'm not going to be a mean or anything but um <laughs> they don't really want to um share some of the equipment sometimes because i kind of understand like there's some like restrictions and like um they want to you be know, careful. Some, yeah, because yeah, I mean, student, the, yeah. student what happens, be. right, is that um, sometimes some classes uh, lend out like some really expensive stuff. Yeah. And what happened at SR when I was there is that some pretty dumb students, I'm not going to lie, left uh, this super, um, the, the super like just expensive gear right out in the back of their car with like not tinted windows at all in the Northgate parking lot. And then that got broken into yeah. and all that got stolen so obviously i think from that perspective you could understand why a teacher would be like okay i'm i'm not gonna be giving this out to like anyone outside of yeah. this program yeah but well, um oh do you want to yeah i was gonna say do you have one uh, anything else to yeah, add um, before we go on a break coming back to the own part yeah i do one day maybe after high school i want to make my own and that'd be kind of cool i think i think i hope that also yours become the reality. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, we're going to take a short break. This is um, Pa Delante by Ismael Lara, and we'll be right back. This society try to crush my spirit, but my Chicano soul don't fall. I'm a honey with it. Mi gente dice al cien, puro pa delante. Patraza más que se va por en vivo ya verás. Vamos, vamos. 
pa' delante, vamos, vamos, pa' delante, vamos, vamos, pa' delante, vamos, vamos, yeah. So who's the victor? You own the silver, the 30 coins of Judas. I'm at dead gold, abundance of wealth with them who never told. I'm the mind alliance, youngest to find, so storm the stars and all the science. Duality of the serpent, don't misinterpret. I'm fine wisdom, age in the temple of the serpent. I'm the flame and of course poems. Wisdom that hits the soul. Nobility, we still look these hard to fight every day. We born to prove victory, not to fade the game. I'm good at the child princess, Ed and Dean on her horse, ready for war. We don't die, we regenerate. Victory, our fate. On a cool breeze, I move with ease. My intellect stays strapped. I embrace my heritage, the brown, white, and the black. I got my mind on my studies, and my studies on my mind, ready to hit back with facts. Black, black jack. So, what's the meaning? Historical victory from the beginning. beginning. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for staying for the second half of the show. Um, I am loving our conversation about podcasts, especially because it's related to to us. And then hearing you start your own po your your podcast at your school is absolutely great. Um, but I do want to get to learn more about you, aside from you know the podcast. And I want to ask you, where are you headed after high school? Um, I'm not really sure. Still, I I thought about um. Because you're a junior, right? Yeah, I'm a junior. Yeah, junior. I still have one more year to think about it. I still have next year and then the year after, but then uh -huh. applications, are, college applications are coming up. But um, I have as my backup plan going to community college, okay. and then I would, I would, my plan is to apply as many different colleges. But like my back of my mind, I do want to go to college room first and then move on. Maybe go to the, um, I don't know somewhere. But I've I've thought about it. I've thought about it. where um I might I was thought about like maybe going to NYC or something, go to community college there. But then also the mm. the um the barrier is like I have, to, I have to be a resident there too. So mm. if I want to get like the um well reduce the cost. yeah the cost, I would have to get um be a resident. But I also have learned that I could also get um scholarships or like some kind of like that could pay half of it, and that could also help. I could go to community college there and live with my um other family, and then go to community college there and then move to another school. Which is like another idea I've had because like I love I love Centerfield. Centerfield is awesome, but um, I have see, I've like seen over time that I kind of want to move away. Mm -hmm. I I love the I love the environment. It's it's Centerfield is an awesome place. Marin is an awesome place to grow up. I think I want to move somewhere else. I know. Have, I, have I, you lived in Marin your whole life? Um, I used to live in Novato, and then we moved down to L.A., and then we came back to Center Fell. Oh. Ooh, very so different that. vibes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, I wish we lived in um, Novato, because that's one of my home places. I love going to the town, and the town mm. is like... I always like the environment that in the town is. It's just... Really? Yeah, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. You know what it, What I think it is about um, Marin? Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful place yeah. that it's very hard to find other places like this. In, in, around here in, in California that are somewhat reasonable pricing um, yeah. and like they have really good, you know, everything. So when you live here for a while, uh, you notice like, man, I like it here. But if I don't leave now, like I'm going to stay here. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I think it's also a very good thing that you want to branch out and reach out. Personally, for me, I didn't go to college. Um, well, I went to, for, to college Marin for like two semesters and then I dropped out because I it just wasn't for me. But um, there is one thing that I always think about, not always think about, but something that I thought about is that if I leave here, I'm going to have a very completely different experience. I'm going to meet new people and all stuff. Now where I am, I'm happy where I am. I think I'm going in the right direction. However, I don't meet a lot of people the way my friends do, mm -hmm. you know, in that area of like making friends, meeting, meeting people outside because college so many people come in from different places. So I think that's a big bonus, like part of college. I want to add on to that. Um, I always thought about the same thing. Um, not similar, but like, what if, um, what if my life works out? And I think it has worked out. Um, <laughs> I hope, I hope it, I hope it, worked, I hope, <laughs> I hope it worked out. But, um, to me, it seems like it did work out. And that's like a big question. I've always asked old, um, much more, um, people who are much a bit more older, like, you know, their twenties, they're going to college and they'll be like, has your, life worked out and they always have um this is my question i've always got was like it has I'm, I'm happy where i am i it is working out and you know i'm still striving to um do what i want to do and i think i've always got that um similar question where um the same no similar answer sorry um 
where it does work out. So that's a, yeah. that's a that's another big thing. I think you gotta being, trust the process. Yeah, because yeah, that's a big thing. When I was in high school, I did terrible my sophomore and junior year because I went through a lot personally. So I couldn't really get my education up. And uh, unfortunately, I really wanted to go to a college after because uh, I'm a first gen. So I wanted to like, you know, get be the first in my family to graduate from college and everything. Um, but at the time, I felt like community college got such a bad rep. I don't know why, but it just like, oh, if you go to community college, it's like you'll never get out or something yeah. like that or whatever. Right. But um, I ended up going to community college after because one, I didn't have any money. Uh, and two, it was just for me, it made more sense at the time. And I'm glad I did. I, I literally graduated in four years. I did exactly what someone who transferred directly from a UC or directly to a state school. I did the same exact thing. I just did co community college for two years instead. And honestly, it wasn't all that. It wasn't bad at all. Like it was... It was a really great experience. I didn't have to pay anything for college because FAFSA yeah, is like an awesome really, yeah. tool. If you have legal documentation, yeah. yes, it yes, is. it is. For those that don't, it's a struggle. Yeah, um, even with the Dream Act too, it's not enough because yeah, not all immigrants are put into that. Which I uh, uh, thank you for issue. bringing that up. That's, That's a big, issue. big issue. Issue, um, but I I think the trusting the process is big. Yeah, because Follow there are your heart. yeah, but it. Uh, there's this quote um i don't have it at the top of my head where a i read it in a book and it talked about how fail fail like failure um is a trickster and it <laughs> like i i have it, a similar quote like yeah, yeah and it, yeah. it it hits you right when you're almost there and so you have to take a step back and realize it's just the process this has to happen um so for me, there were many times where I'm like, man, I see a lot of my friends and, and they're in college and stuff. But, and I'm doing this for my future. And I'm like, oh, no, should I just go back in school? But I'm like, but I don't feel myself in school. Um, and then that's when I'm like, you know what? This is working out. There are many challenges that I'm facing along the way, but I'm meant to face those challenges to mm. be able to keep going. Absolutely. And yeah. Absolutely. Um, with that also, I think our our age and and generation it's so interesting because i feel like back in the day you had to decide what you wanted to be a doctor a lawyer um but nowadays it's like so many things are coming in new that i don't think that there's a one way i feel like you're gonna find out what you like what you don't like um leading to my question is what are things that you're interested in right now i'm well, the one thing is the podcast. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one of them. But I think I'm interested in medical fields. Oh. Also, environmental and like climate um, change, like moving into climate change and mm. moving into the renewable technology. Sorry. Renewable industry. That's another big thing that I've seen a lot of like companies moving towards that. Like, um, great ones are MCE and IL. That's another big company. They work with like national parks. And then the one works with um, renewable energy in California. And then. I don't know. That's something that also is really kind of inspiring. Like we're going to this new age of like um, trying to stop climate change and there's new opportunities that are opening up. That's a big, um, I think, feel that I really want to go into for some reason. And I've also thought about like going to journalism too. Like, oh, going journalism. To, yeah, going into mm. that too. And then um, I wanted to be an engineer, but mm. I reconsidered. I'm not really anymore. Not really. <laughs> I feel like I'm with you. I want to be so many things at once. Yeah, that's how I was too. I I wanted. To, I think I was interested in engineering, but then after physics academy, I was just like, yeah, never mind. <laughs> I don't, I, physics academy is like SR is like engineering. Yeah, I've academy, heard it. Basically. I've heard it's really really hard. It's it is. It was it was pretty like it was not a good time. I did not like that class, and I'm not afraid to say that because I graduated already, and I ended up not becoming an engineer because of that class. So. Yeah, no, it's true. Like, sometimes your mind changes all the time, especially when you're in high school. Like, at one point you're saying, oh, I want to be a doctor. And then, like, a week later you're like, you know what? I actually don't want to be a doctor. I want to become, like, a surf instructor or yeah. something. You know, like, you can, like, change your mind so quickly, especially at your age, right? Yeah. Like, right now in high school, my mind was, like, on so many mm -hmm. different things. Yeah. I think what's also helped with is um, technology. I grew up in, um, well, two years before the, the iPhone came out. And then when that came out, like the technology moved way faster than I thought it would make than it is. I think in the last 20 years, it's like, it's been an, ex um, an amazing, it would also, I think, um, has a lot of issues that we had to fix too, but it's been like, um, I think our generation has been like in a weird mixture of technology, living with technology. Mm -hmm. That's another big thing. I think a lot of more older adults have like 
It's hard yeah. for for a lot of older generations to understand, and a lot of them are trying to adapt into the new environment that we are in, especially like technology in schools. Like you see that so much more now. Like I went to my little brother's elementary school, and you <laughs> see this big TV, and I'm uh, like, yeah, "Excuse uh, me, I didn't uh, have that." Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They have those. They have those at um. At, sorry, didn't no, it's like, okay. Um, at SR too, like they have these new like screens, but like they have like the pens. So yeah, it's just at, so different. Yeah. Like yeah. it's moving into different things. Um, I think high school is a very beautiful ex- time. Like honestly, I miss high school because of the responsibility was just doing your homework, doing sports. If you had any extra like, sports or activities that you're doing, uh, once you're grown up you start to value a little bit of that part school experience that yeah. part yeah. it's so pers- short it's only yeah. 4 years but it's true our minds are in very different places and i think that was one of my biggest things with college was you know, I studied for the SATs. I did everything I had to do, the requirements to be able to, to apply. I applied to colleges. Um, but committing to four years to me was so intense, mm-hmm. which is why I got in to all of the colleges and I got really good um, money. But I said, I don't feel right committing to this. I'd rather go to a, co- to a community college yeah, and do what I need to do there. And then I can transfer to another college. And, and if, if I'm interested in, in, in you know, um, sound or or film or music, you know, you I can go. There. I have the it. option. Yeah, yeah. Um, much easier than. Yeah, but high school is there. a very interesting thing, and you're also dealing with your emotions. A lot of people start dealing with their emotions. Uh, you start liking people. You start mm. getting all of these yeah. different feelings that you're not so used to. Plus, the the deciding what you want to do after is just like whoa. Um, but because um, I think everyone in high school feels like they're already an adult. When they're not an adult, no. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah, I remember. Trust th- yeah. me. <laughs> I remember thinking I was like so mature, and then I like looking back, I'm like, yeah, never mind. I didn't know what I was thinking, <laughs> you know. Um, and speaking of your, you know, your experiences at SR, have you enjoyed your time at SR so far? Yeah, I I feel like I've enjoyed my I enjoyed my junior year a lot more than I've um had because our first for freshman year was online, and then our sophomore year was like coming back from mm-hmm. that COVID year was like kind of weird in a way. Like teachers weren't like. Um, hundred percent. They were like fifty percent or forty percent. They weren't there yet. But now, like this year is like, they're more like capable of teaching now. I think. Mm-hmm. I think it was a rough. I feel like my senior year was um way too easy. Really? I mean, because was, was because, it online or? Yeah, it was That's online. A, uh, it was right when that pandemic hit, and so everything was just like. Everything was so new. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I didn't get my high school. I didn't go to prom. I didn't go. I didn't do anything because we were locked in. Were Um, you class of 2022 or? 2020. 2020. It was right when like, I think the first, like the first part semester of, um, uh, of my high school senior year, it was on, it was cut right at the end. And then it was like, you're off. I'm pretty sure. Right. Am I right on that? Yeah. And then it was just, um, being home and. Yeah, but like you said, you think you're an adult, but then once you're like working and trying to do so many things, you realize like, man, I miss that time. And but, responsibilities. But um, their high school isn't all pretty, you know. You do face challenges. Um, um, oh yeah. <laughs> and what ha- have what have my questioning is <laughs> <laughs> what challenges have you faced as a high school student in SR or just being in high, you know, a high schooler in general? So, um, this might be a bit more vulnerable, but, um, I'll go for it. But yeah, share um, with what you're comfortable with. Yeah. You don't have to overshare. Um, I was back during 2020. I like, for one reason, I liked going on, being online because I didn't want to talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. I didn't, because it was COVID, but I also felt like, I didn't feel like I was a part of my community just yet. And I wasn't there quite yet. Like, I wasn't like this person who was confident, like I'm now, and like this person who, um, who do a lot more. I think that was a big issue of like. I never really wanted to see my like peers, but now that I've come back, like it, um coming back into sophomore year was um kind of a big um big big jump coming back from mm-hmm. being online and going in person. And yeah, I would hang out with more seniors because I feel like they would embrace um who I kind of was. I still hang out with some seniors now, but um it was more of like I don't want to be with my class with, has a lot of drama and stuff i want to be with people who are like-minded minds in a way or like who are similar to me who kind of um embrace who i kind of am mm-hmm. that's how i found i found this friend um 
where we went to geometry over the summer together. And then we, well, I knew her back in middle school, but we reconnected after during the summer and like we did a class together and we went to sophomore year and we had so much fun together. And then she made, we made some really good memories together. Um, She's at college now, but um, we went to soul food, which I've never gone to soul food. And she brought me to soul food and it was like really good food. And so that's a big um, memory that I love. That's and awesome. Yeah. And also I think the biggest one was like, I had um, this friend, which I've had other friends in the past, like best friends and stuff. And, you know, they always like fall apart, you know, how like a relationship falls apart. That's how it happened. And then I was like, kind of reflect on it. Um, and it was a big, it was a big impact, I think, because I had one right before COVID started and I reflected on that one for a quite a long time and accepted it a long time. It took me a long time to accept that, accept that one. And another one happened during my sophomore year too, going into 20, this year, I think. Yeah, this year. And it was a big jump coming, going to those, like, um, those, like, those happen for, like, I told myself they happen for a reason. And I've heard this um, quote, I think it was online, or on I don't know where it was, but I was on the internet some, somewhere. But this thing came up was, like, they were in your life, but they did something to, to, towards your life that you were not ready yet. That was, I think it, I might say it a bit more differently, but it was a way like that, like it was an eye opener that, um, they, like every person has a, a is at a different level mm -hmm. and that sometimes not everybody might not understand the person you are at the time, Yeah, but eventually they will. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like there's different, like kind of like intelligences, right? Where some people are like, like they like school. Yeah. They're like, they were really well in class, but they're like not socially smart. You know what I mean? Or there's people that are socially smart and but don't really enjoy class. Like you said, like, I mean, obviously there's probably people that have all these qualities, but I'm saying that I, I think what's really cool about both of your guys' perspective here about how you felt like college wasn't right for you. Right. Um, and kind of how you're so flex, like feeling very flexible right now with, with your life. Like, I think it's just important to acknowledge that like everybody thinks differently of how they want themselves and you shouldn't be influenced by like other people i think that's a, such a big thing that happens in high school too is that people are easily influenced by others uh because what popularity yeah or for clout or whatever like it's mm -hmm. yeah. what i've seen too is um well i think i also saw i was on the internet too is like we sometimes like um like we are um let's say how do i say this correctly but um we like when we see other people have like let's say they want have this really cool jacket or something mm -hmm. um, thank you yeah <laughs> <laughs> we we sometimes like in like cop not really copy but like um adapt to like let's say i want that jacket but i want it part of my my day life and i might let's say that his jacket or, his, or her jacket and i might like copy that jacket but i might use it for a different purpose than mm -hmm. for the person I've i've seen it with or like i think it was like we like see other people but then we we adapt to like like a tiny bit of them and then we might use it for our own like per, like our life in a way yeah like you're only copying what you see on social media to no, 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 fit no, no. with other no, 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 no. or so like, like um so let's say you see some some person walking by you and then you see something like today's um these favorite this favorite shoes that you want so for a long time mm -hmm. you might want to buy those shoes or you like see like the characters how they use those kind of shoes you might get influenced and use that in your daily life oh so, uh, yeah. okay Okay. It's not like for clout, but like more like it, the purpose of your, I think, your life. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I do want to go back with something you said important that I think is very important. And I struggled so much with this through high school. And if high school students are listening to the podcast, um, I would love for them to hear that. And it's friends come and go. It's mm -hmm. part of nature. Relationships in, throughout your entire life, you're going to deal with the relationships. They're going to come in and out. And one of the biggest things that I had or struggle, struggled with is letting go. Like I would be so hurt when I wa saw someone walk away from my friendship. Like I'm like, I thought you, you and I were going to be friends until the end, <laughs> yeah. you know, until yeah. you die and I die. But I realized that that's not the case, that friends come and go and it's okay. And that they're meant to be certain people are meant to be in your life for certain seasons. Yeah. Have you heard that? Yeah, I've heard that. Where like, it's like, yeah. they're meant to be here for a reason, to teach you something, for you to learn something, and then they move on, and then you continue growing in that way. And when it comes to, I love this quote, I love to read and listen to audios. So one of the things that 
I heard is that tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are yeah, because we are very influenced by other people, mm-hmm. people, whether you like it or not, it's just that. So being you yourself is, is way hard, harder than faking it. Yeah. You know, you know, faking is so much easier than being yourself because we're afraid of like, oh, that doesn't work for you. Your outfit doesn't look good and stuff. But the best way you look is that confidence you have saying right. you might not like it. It's okay. I don't need your approval. I got my approval and that's what I'm going to rock the outfit, the shoes, the sweater, the music that I hear, um, which is really, really nice. So that's one of the big things that I, I wish I knew in high school and it took me long, especially now that I'm 21 and I'm, can we, again, still today, friendships are coming and going. That's my biggest um, thing about high school. Because yeah. people change. Mm-hmm. You know? and, yeah. and, and the thing is, like, I had a couple friends in high school that I now hate. You know what I mean? Like, I would have <laughs> never thought that, like, after being with these people yeah. for so long that I would ever have, like, hateful feelings towards other people. But then at, at that moment, I was like, people just change, you know, they change up on you and, and it's so unexpected. And especially in high school, when you're still growing, when you're still like thinking about your future, you feel like you're alone at some points. Cause then you're like, Oh, well now these friends, I don't want to hang out with them anymore or whatever. Right. Or I thought they were my friends. Like, it's just, it's things that happen like that. And it's, it's just an unfortunate part of life, but it's also a way to grow. Cause then you know how to better pick your friends as well. Cause what you'll see is when you grow up, right. You'll, you'll be able to choose your friends. You're not going to be forced into this like environment. Right you'll be able to more pinpoint like who really is your friend? Like who really do I want to be friends with? Um, yeah. yeah. I, I do. I do see that too. And I want to add on to like um, some of my favorite quotes. If you want to go. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Go uh, ahead. Quotes. From the new Black Panther movie. Um, oh, no. I love that movie. Yeah. Um, one of them was from, if no one has seen it before, but um, from the villain. Was, Spoiler uh, alert, but continue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the one we didn't know our spoilers, but um, uh, is was like, I think it was like, if I don't remember the quote correctly, but it was like if you're the most broken person, or the um, or the most broken person can become the great or like some greatest good leader, and that's a really good quote because I kind of like it because I feel like kind of um I was kind of broken before, okay, and now I'm starting to like go into a new phase that like of becoming something else that I wanted to be. Can I ask you yeah. w- the broken part? Um, mm-hmm. was like you said I think before was um. The identity part, like my identity and then having confidence and then also um, not getting the approval of others, I think, anymore. Yeah. I think yeah. that doesn't yeah. really yeah. matter to me anymore, I think. And that's a big that's a big thing that I had to like um that was another goal too during COVID was like becoming more confident and I yeah. I comp- I, I made that um goal. And um I kinda don't like I I see myself as a person I wanna be and I'm still improving every day, but um I don't really need other people to uh, tell me what needs to be done in my life anymore, I think. So I just um, don't really need to prove others. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's a... Thank you for sharing that. I know it's yeah. really hard saying, hey, you know, I am broken. I don't, you know, I have these feelings and it, being vulnerable in that way is so hard. But thank you for sharing that way. Um, you know, other people can understand too that, yeah, we can be so... Everything is fine on social media, but reality is we're all struggling with different things. We all have individual challenges that push us, that challenge us, that it feels like, man, I can't get up anymore. But again, that's where failure likes to be. Uh, It's like, I'm putting you down. Let's see how far you're going to get up. Let's see if you actually want it and you're going to get up. People are jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Many people want to see, like, no one wants to see someone else happier than them, right? I've seen... No, no, go, 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 go. no. How you go ahead? Yeah, because people are so selfish. I'll admit it. I'm pretty selfish. I feel like a lot of us are just selfish. Yeah, because yeah. we, we are selfish by nature. So when we see people on social media posting like, "Oh, look, I just bought my new BMW and I'm only 16 or something," or like this and that, like it's just like things like that, like can affect people's mental health if they're not prepared for it in a, in the right way. In, in terms of like if they're low self esteem. Again, it comes with confidence, like in yourself, right? Like when you see other people, you're like, okay, good for them, you know. But that that that's not going to affect me. It's not going to make yeah. me want to go like start doing all these crazy things just to be just like them, just to get a picture on social media. Um, yeah, yeah, that's really good. That's I, that is. I think it also also is like I think both of you said it too, earlier was like um, sometimes we might be comparing ourselves to others. I think the other thing that I've learned too is um, like even going to the gym or going to somewhere is like 
you're actually fighting yourself in a way, I think. You're the one who, You're like, facing your biggest battle, which yeah. is you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're, you are the one. And that's the big issue that I've also have, like, um, like your ego and, like, having, like, it's overthinking. I, I was being... I am still an overthinker, but not as much. And then also this other part was, like, the ego of, like, like comparing myself to others. And that's another thing that mm-hmm. I had to, like... For me, it worked for me. It might not work for others, but I think... Or other people might have different um, solutions um, for their ego. But I think what's for me was to silence it a little bit. And that's going to help me not really compare myself to others anymore, I think. Even in the gym, like, I think myself, I think it's me trying to go every day, I think. That's that's my goal, try to go every day. And, you know, I think I still got time. I still got, like, I don't know how much time I got. But I got, like, 80 years more. We just to say that. But um, 80 years more to do what I want to be. And then... It's never too yeah. late to start. Yeah. Never too late to start mm-hmm. any yeah. journey. Um, yeah. For sure. I think yeah. that... Again, just the high school life, we all compare one another. Um, it's like if mine is better or... Um, yeah, exactly. But ultimately, I feel like <laughs> that's just like... Yeah. The best thing is knowing you're okay with yourself and then how you interact with other people yeah. and how um, you care for yourself too, which um, is a huge thing that is missed out in, in high school, especially that social like the uh like say, trying to live your life at the moment or, can you repeat that or Sorry. trying to live like your life at the moment yeah and just being smart emotionally that's a huge thing in high school that isn't you're not prepared for no. you're taught about math and science and but social, which which, which like, is important but at the same time there's something that's i think in my opinion way more important and it's how to deal with your emotions and your thoughts your thoughts are connected with your emotions which lead to your actions and i think that's a part that's left out completely in high school um and in school in general saying i'm feeling sad or i'm comparing myself how how that um um works right Mm -hmm. and i wish that was one of my biggest things with school is the fact that we don't learn that we learn just memorize testing and that there's a huge part yeah but there's that part of the human part is Mm -hmm. so important to me because i value being able to know you and understanding that you and i we're both human yeah we you're we you like things that I don't like. I like things that you might like or might not like, but it's okay. We can get along. That there could be a respect in that, and that I can't compare myself to you because um, you started maybe way earlier in the journey that I'm just starting. So how do you compare something that you started five months that I just started a month ago? Yeah. You know that is yeah. just so tricky. Um, but overall, I think that high school enjoy it, and then just don't take things too um, serious. Um, enjoy the time, learn, and try different things. And if you don't like it, it's okay. Try a sport. You don't like it, it's okay. You 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 left the club, it's okay. You know, it's part of the process. Um, and for me, that was a big thing. Um, do you want to say anything? Yeah, else? I mean, uh, maybe retract- retracting a little bit from what we're talking right now. Uh, I actually just wanted to know a little bit more. Uh, Marco, do you do, um, like, do, are you in part of any other clubs other than the podcast club or like extra curricular activities after school? Like, what are you part of? Um, I want to just uh, end with, um, can I just say one more thing? One yeah, it's yeah. okay. I, I have one more quote that says, um, it's from a. The Avengers. Endgame. You guys love yeah. quotes. Yeah, oh, I Avengers. mean, I read. Yeah. I read a lot. I, I love movies a lot. But um, <laughs> yeah. that quote was um, it was from R. It was from R. J. or Robert Downey Jr. It was like, he says it in the movie. I think it was um, part of the journey is the end. That's a really good one too. I think I like mm-hmm. it a lot. It was like we all have a journey that's going to end someday. So mm-hmm. I think living in the moment or living at your, well, main character, if you want to say that, or if you want to live in the moment, um, I think is one of the good things I think before because I think I've accepted. Finally, like um, that someday that I will be gone, and I think I've accepted that at a um, young age. I think. Yeah. And it's not that scary anymore. I think when you finally accept when you. It's good. Only be gone. So you're yeah. just like I'm. I'm ready to live. Yeah. I'm here and I'm gonna enjoy, and I don't care what people say. Right. That's a great way to live life. Trust me, great way to live life. And to complete the quote that you were trying to, <laughs> I'm gonna share my <laughs> your quote. Okay, yeah. go ahead. We're I we're, we're quote, quote day today. I really want to know. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's not my yeah. quote actually. But it, I'm just completing okay. the quote that you were trying to remember, the broken one. It's, it goes, only the most broken people can be great leaders. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, well, true, because you have so much experience uh, in a way, you know? Mm-hmm. I think I, I agree with that because um, 
a lot of people like there's so much to them that you don't this is the thing too we're so quick to judge one another yeah. oh, like yeah. oh my life is easier than yours or you don't know what it is to live my life but if we really if we could wa if i could watch the movie of your life i could be like man the struggles he went went through if you were to watch my movie, you'd be like, man, she went through some yeah. tough stuff, maybe. So that is a tricky thing that we don't see is the person behind that person, right? The story, the 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 struggles, the challenges that you've already overcome. And on social media, right? It's so easy for people to like get into wars about like like who has the worst life, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if someone posts like, oh, I had to pay like $300 for this food that I bought, like... I wish I didn't have to buy this. And then people are like, well, you can afford to get $300. Like, I can't get $300 in three weeks or something. Like, it's just in the comments. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, everyone yeah. starts saying like, oh, like my, basically just saying that their life is harder than theirs, right? I think but, just everybody has a hard life. Yeah. Yeah. A a life everyone is life. Does. Life is not easy. It's ups and down like a roller coaster. I personally don't like roller coasters, but it really <laughs> is. You know, there's highs, there's lows, and that's part of life. And once you understand that, you're gonna be. You're gonna do a lot of great things in life yeah. because you got that very, very point. Well, we're nearly the end of the show, um, sure. and I want to give you guys this time to say any last thing, any advice you have for high school students or in general. I'm gonna answer um, Javier's question really fast. But um, yeah, go ahead. Um, I yeah, I'm 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 part of other clubs, um, but not really right now because I'm focused on the um, podcast club. But okay. I'm part of like the AP classes and um, not really doing sports right now, but I'm also part of other um, internships also outside of school. So that's another big, and also my job. That's another big thing. I always tell myself, um, there's some people um, might say that they're busy, but I also say I'm busy, but I'm, I sometimes say I'm a lot, I don't really say I'm busy, but I I think sometimes I don't realize that I'm, I'm a lot busier than I am. And then I don't, I don't know. I don't like, I don't, I don't like sharing that a lot, but um, I think it's just trying to find like programs that I kind of like and then. What's that thing that you're part of at SR with Marguerite? Um, you guys talk about like issues, I think. Um, that's the student advocacy or SLAM. So what is that? SLAM is like um created, um, was created to have like, um it was like the um not have racism on campus in a way. The name, the name, I forget the name, but um uh -huh. that's just a short one. But um that was created so like we could, the school could help um well the group of students like um in that program could help the school fight back racism and like um stop that from happening and continue in continuing on mm. that's another that's another thing yeah okay that's yeah. a really good topic that we yeah. we we unfortunately don't have time to touch on yeah. um but again do you guys want to say anything before before we end the show yeah um i feel like take a risk even if it's a failure i think that's a big one i think that i've said um in other places too i think take a risk even if even even if it's a failure i think you, you still, learn you still yeah yeah you, you learn a lot you tried yeah. And you got to give it your all like when you're when you're experiencing so many things in high school, it, it could feel a little overwhelming. Yeah. But you just got to know that sometimes you just got to take it in. You, you got to take it in and roll with the punches because at the end of the day, you're going to look back at what happened and you're going to be like, wow, OK, actually, I understand now like how I could have done that better and how to not have things repeat over time when I when I continue to grow. Right. Yeah. Um, I think I started um, cut you off, but um, another one as a high school student, I think. We shouldn't really worry about the future. I think it's um, TBD. I would say that TBD is always going to uh, be to be determined somehow. <laughs> yeah. So that's a big thing. I always tell myself it's TBD tomorrow and today right now, just live right now. But that's another thing. As a high school student, I think sometimes we worry a bit too much. I think just let the... Um, just let it be, I think. Let it, uh, let it happen. TV, yeah, TBD. Yeah. yeah. TBD tournament. Well, perfect. Thank you guys so much. I I really enjoyed having you. I think we had a very good conversation of different things um, related to high school. And it's good. Um, I think that there's a reason why you were you're here um to send that message um yeah thank you so much and to everyone who's watching remember that we are always uh live on fridays from four to five um i do want to ask one last thing for the next um 30 seconds that we have how can they listen to your podcast um you can go on spotify or apple um podcast and just put bulldog podcast and then one more thing to give a shout out to um, javier and um Santi. Santi. <laughs> it's okay. Good, they do a great job here at Tay Radio, so that's a big... Yeah. Well, perfect. Thank, Thank you, you well, guys. We'll post your uh, link to the Spotify and Apple Music on our 